Hey guys, what is up? And welcome back, or welcome to, if you're new here, my name is Beth. And today, you have stumbled upon my cross stitch whip parade. Why a parade? If you're new here, uh, we do more than one project at a time. Let me back up a second because I do kind of want to talk about like my history in cross stitching. Um, also, side note, I have two littles. They're in another room, but if you hear them, tis life. So anyway, back in 2015 is when I first stumbled upon the urge to want to try a cross stitching project. I bought a project from Walmart and I started it, never finished that. And then I kind of like bought a bunch of stuff in like three months span time. I finished one thing for somebody and then stopped stitching for a while and a couple years later gave all the stuff away. Um, so yeah, I call that like my trial era. Uh, but I, I say that I officially started cross stitching this year in April. So this year in April, I decided, okay, Obviously, I'm a big reader. I love to read. I have these bookshelves behind me, bookshelves on that wall over there. Like, I, thousands of books. I, I read all the time, okay? Big reader. But in April, I kind of got into this slump. I couldn't get into anything, you know? And I am one of the types of people, I don't know if you can tell, that my brain is just like, you know, and I have to keep my hands busy. And so like, if I'm not like reading, if I'm not doing something, I feel like, you know, so I was like, well, let me go ahead and just try cross stitching again. Because I was doing on my iPad, there's this app called Color Happy or Happy Color, one of those. And I was doing that which is really fun. And then me and my husband also got into diamond painting. So we kind of like, you know, do one, we like share, do it, take turns doing it. And then we're monogamous when it comes to diamond painting. Anyway, and so then I was like, well, let me just get back into cross stitching. So in April, I bought a dimensions kit. And a couple weeks later, I bought another pattern and some fabric. And a couple weeks later, I bought another. And um, yeah. I now have 33 whips and <laughs> yep, 33 whips. I will say that considering that I just started cross stitching in April, I also did take a couple of months off from like July to October um, because life got busy. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> for the amount of projects that I have, I feel like my progress is decent. Especially considering like 21 starts in December. I started 21 things. I was not playing around <laughs> in December. I also have a bunch of stuff kitted up, but I had to like stop myself because I do want to do Stitch Mania. But I also like one of my big goals this year is to do the 24 and 24. So finish 24 products, projects <laughs> in 2024. Now when you see my whip parade, you're probably going to be like Beth. You literally have no smalls, girl. You have all big stuff. I might have like two things that would be considered small, but everything else, I like big things and I cannot lie. I have full coverages. I have one full coverage piece that um, is 800 by 800 stitches. Do the math on that, babe. It's big. Um, I only worked on it one day and I think I have like a thousand stitches in it. I'll say like my average. Um, if we're not going anywhere or doing anything, I can typically get like one to 2,000 stitches a day. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I digress. Before I dive in to all of my whips, I'm gonna show you how I store my whips. Because let me tell you what, I have went on YouTube countless of times trying to figure out like the best way to store all your cross stitching stuff. And there's hardly any videos out there. There's hardly any, I follow a lot of floss tubers here and hardly any of them show like how they store their stuff and because I had like just started in April we're just gonna say that okay we're not even gonna talk about my little trial period in 2015 um just started in April I was initially storing all of my stuff in like a big Rubbermaid thing uh but now it's I call it my little stitchy station I'm gonna show you and she's cute and then after I show you how I store my whips I will then show you all 33 whips and then at the very end of the video I'll talk a little bit about plans and then 
I'm gonna go stitch after that, obvi. So yeah, so let's go. Okay, so this is what I keep all of my stitching stuff in. It is sits right below our Scrabble board in my book room. This is the side that you don't see. This is the side that you do see. You see, I'm a reader. <laughs> so I bought this little cube thing from Target and these little bins are perfect for project bags. These are like, normally when you go to the store, they have two different sizes. These are the bigger options, like the 15 inch options. Got these from Walmart. Uh, and this little thing from Target. You see I bought an ironing board and an iron to start ironing my projects. And I went to do that yesterday and I got so nervous that I was gonna mess something up, so I didn't do it. <laughs> so up here at the top, I just have like my iPad, my book of days, and then like a clipboard because if I'm working on a project that uses a paper pattern, I have to have a clipboard, no doubt. Then I have like my candle, uh, needle, needle minders. I just buy magnets off Amazon and use those as needle minders. You know, it's affordable. And then I have my cup of pins and scissors and highlighters and things like that. I do not keep scissors in my project bags. I do not keep pins in my project bags. I keep them all here and every day I just grab one when I need it. And then some fray check there. And then on the top tote here is like my stash. I try not to overdo it on stash. So I have, let's see, my patterns are all in here. This is my extra DMC, some extra Krynek, and then my two Q-snaps and some extra bags down there. And that is it. I don't hoard any extra fabric. When I go to want to kit up a project, I will buy the fabric for that project at that time. I don't want to overdo it and then, you know, have it hoarded in a year or so later like that fabric not be my choice of fabric if that makes sense so I just I'd rather not and then over here I have my entire DMC set some thread bobbins from Adam Hart uh cross stitch and then this little thing that you use to do your false bobbins and then down here in these two I have all of my whips and you'll see like even the bigger Amazon bags fit in these things and then here I have more whips there is like six kitted project so like six of these aren't whips it's just a kitted project but I just wanted to share with you how I store my cross stitching so let's go ahead and dive into my whips we'll start with my one UFO I did ditch a stitch <laughs> and I talked about it in a past video and a lot of comments were like don't ditch it um, just don't stitch it with four strands of floss or whatever, but I had already stitched a big chunk of the areas that called for four strands of floss. So, and it's, it's the background of the piece. And if I would have just suddenly switched to two, it would look funky because like part of the cross stitch would have like the dimension that's supposed to be there with like the multiple different types of stitches. Um, and then part of the project would not. And I'm just gonna be real with you. I Marie Kondo that shit. It was not making me happy. It was hurting my thumb. It was hurting my soul. The floss would just like shred to pieces. <laughs> I was just like not having it. Not having it. Um, it is not like a unicorn piece for me. Got rid of it. So yeah, that was my one UFO project. I did restart a few projects uh, this year, but I'll show show you those as we go on. So I'm going to go in chronological order and show you my oldest whip. So this is the bookcase by Gileana Cross Stitch. I don't think her store is still around anymore, but it's supposed to be like a monochromatic piece. I decided to not make it monochromatic and to make it colorful so that's what I'm doing and I'm just randomly picking flosses as I go um yeah so this is stitched on 36 count Edinburgh no Oaken linen by picture this plus and this was started on April the 24th it's kind of wrinkly but it's fine um so this is what it looks like now and uh yeah I did see my little flower in the vase there I did uh, not follow the pattern the pattern called for like an ivy type situation I wanted to add a little sunflower and so I did so I just charted that myself I, I feel like it kind of looks funny because the vase is so big compared to the flower so I don't know if I want to frog it and do something different 
or whatever but I'm gonna add the books and stuff and then I'll make that decision later because maybe it'll look good once the other, you know I don't know I do like you know sometimes you see at home goods or wherever they'll have like a vase with one little flower in it you know and it's kind of cute that was what I was kind of going for but I don't know so that is the oldest whip she's not even a year old but I haven't stitched it on her in quite some time I might pull her out this week and get some more of the actual bookshelf done most of my projects are in these amazon project bags i'll link them down below i have these big ones here and then i have some that are a little bit smaller i prefer the smaller ones i tend to not have as much struggle with the zippers when it comes to the smaller ones um but i am slowly getting like legit project bags and i'll show you the ones that, that i have and actually i think my next project no, not my next, but the one after that um, is in a pretty fancy project bag. Anyway, if you see me glance into the side, it's because I have my whip list, so I know what order to go in. Uh, so my next project is a project that I initially saw on Megan the Seattle Stitchers channel, which by the way, the bookcase, I saw Bridgen from the Museum Stitcher stitching it, which is why I was like, okay, I need that. And so... That was inspired by her and then this next one I saw Megan the Seattle Stitcher I uh, get it and start stitching it and I was like <laughs> yep I need that one too so yeah so this is Lady in the Flag and I started this one on May 30th of this year each of my projects has an index card and I put what the pattern is what I'm stitching it on and the date that I started and any other notes if I need to but I do have an index card in each of my bags. So the designer of this project is Thea Gobernur. Govern, I don't know. And it is 26, 27 count Jobelin, which is the fabric that came with the kit. And I'm just doing all of the kit stuff. So this, this project has been washed twice because twice I have spilt Diet Coke on this. I am not kidding. I pulled it out to stitch and I spilt Diet Coke on it. I washed it, let it dry. The next day I put it back in my Q-snap, Q, yeah, Q-snap, went to stitch, spilt Diet Coke on it again. I did not learn my lesson. So it is a bit wrinkly. And then uh, this fabric was not surged, so I did surge myself if you want to call it that uh, because it was fraying so bad after I washed it now this one is stitched kind of weird I am a cross-country stitcher I stitch where I want when I want um, I don't follow the pages I don't go in a row it's you'll notice that <laughs> but I wanted to go from side to side to essentially see how much uh, border I'm gonna have because word on the street was Thea doesn't give you much like border and I understand this is a tapestry so maybe there's not supposed to be border I'm not gonna hang this as a tapestry I'm going to frame this but anyway so you'll see I went from one side to another now there is maybe like an inch more to do on this side so it's not even all the way to the end but you'll see there's the unicorn's mouth and then it the mirror is on this side. It's gonna be beautiful when it's done. I love stitching on this. I need to pull it back out. It's just, I recently, this is a paper pattern. It's huge. And I recently started using Markup RXP or whatever it's called, the Apple version of Pattern Keeper. And when I tell you, it spoils you because now I'm like, <laughs> Do I really want to stitch with on paper? Anyway, so there's that one. So then on June the 2nd, I decided to join a stitch along. I want to say, I know the frame was already out because I was seeing people stitch up the frame. I want to say part one maybe was already out or was about to, I don't, it doesn't really matter. So I joined the Greenhouse of Oddities Stitch Along by Lola Crow. It is now completely done. And one, I will say that I'm not probably ever going to do another mystery stitch along again because I, <laughs> I'm kind of picky, I think. And this is one, I'm going to finish it, but I don't, this is not one that I probably, it'll probably be finished and then put in like 
an under the bed box you know what I mean like one of those kind of things I don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see but this is where I'm at I'm not even done with the frame and I've been like working on the first planting I think I finished the second planting and I was working on a third planting I don't know I mean it's cute but it is definitely like if it was fully done and like just being sold I mean it is fully done and just being sold right now I wouldn't buy it but that's what I get I just when I first started back stitching again I was just wanting to do what everybody else was doing you know I was getting envious FOMO whatever and that's where this came from and this is stitched on 36 count Mirage linen by Picture This Plus and I'm stitching it two over two uh, with all the called for DMC. I do all called for floss 99% of the time unless it's like a monochromatic piece and I want to change it up but yeah. Okay my next project is in my IT project bag. You guys this um, <laughs> seller that I bought these bags from on Etsy every single one of her bags comes with a little charm on the bag so this is a balloon with Pennywise's face on it and I'm just obsessed obsessed and the zippers on these are like butter so this is my Stephen King house this is from Dark Carnival I believe is her shop name I have a few of her bags you'll see some more here in a minute I love them. She's my favorite bag seller that I had come across so far. I messaged her actually and asked her if she had any Stephen King fabric and she sent me photos of all the different fabric choices that she had and I chose this and she made me this bag um, when I was buying other bags from her. But this is my Stephen King house. This is by the Witchy Stitcher I believe. Yes, on Etsy. And this is stitched on 16 count Barnwood Ada by Picture This Plus. If I stitch on Ada, it's definitely going to be from Picture This Plus, unless it like comes with a kit or something, because their Ada is just, it's soft like fabric. And I absolutely am obsessed. <laughs> so this is where I'm at on my Stephen King house. So I have finished two rooms besides the back stitching of the spider webs in the corners and I decided to continue on with the frame of the house. <sighs> you know when you watch these whip parades because I have been binging everybody's whip parades all week long everybody says um I'm gonna say I'm gonna stitch on this in a minute uh, throughout the entire thing you know like ah oh, this makes me want to stitch on this this makes me want to stitch this literally makes me want to pull all these projects out because now I'm like maybe I want to stitch on this this week instead um yeah so, so that is my Stephen King house and my beautiful it dark carnival project bag so then on June the 9th I started another project and this project was intended to be stitched for someone else but as I started stitching it I was like no this project was made for me I love this project I'm stitching it I'm framing it it'll be hung in my house so maybe after I stitch it and frame it if I feel like stitching a second one I'll stitch it and give it to the person that I intended this project to be for but for now <laughs> it is for me and this is the Lord's Prayer by Lila Studio and this is stitched on 40 count affogato linen by Fiber on a Whim which is one of my all-time favorite uh, choices of linen I have a few projects on this linen because I love it um, but this is how far I've got I this is probably my wrinkliest project it's the fiber on the whim fabric I enjoy stitching on but it is crispy kind of it's not as soft as a bunch of the other fabrics um but anyway she's gonna be gorgeous this was my very obviously my very first project that I stitched one over two and this project made me obsessed with stitching with one thread all right, up next is my very first Mirabilia, and this one is called Feather Fairy, and it is stitched on 32 count ancient linen from Picture This Plus. I started this one on June 23rd, and I feel like, I feel like 
I made some good progress on this one. Oh, I was wondering where this needle minder went. So <laughs> the needle minder is from off Etsy. Um, I don't know how y'all like keep track of all the stores that you get your needle minders and stuff from. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, this is where I got to. So I've been working in her skirt. I haven't picked her up in a while. I probably should. This is definitely, I have a list. These colors are beautiful, first off. I have a list of um, all of the projects that I want to focus on a finish this year. And she is towards the top of the list. So she'll be pulled out uh, probably in the next month or so. I also, you probably can't tell, but right here, I started her skin and it was my first time doing one over one. In person, you can see it clearly, but like on camera, I don't know if you can tell. It was my first time doing one over one, uh, which is very intimidating, but yeah. So that is my very first Mirabilia and it is Feather Fairy. Oh, I'm so excited to start stitching on her. See, <laughs> this um, parade is gonna make me stitch. I normally stitch two things a day, so I'll stitch on something in the morning for the first couple of hours that I'm up by myself before my kids get up. And then throughout the day, we'll do what we need to do. And then towards the evening, I'll pull out another project and work that evening. Unless I'm like really obsessed with the project. But normally how it goes is I'll work on a full coverage in the morning. And then in the evening, I'll pull out something like this and pick a couple of colors and just work on those colors. But anyway, there's that. Shortly after that, I wanted to start another Mirabilia. So this is Aphrodite Mermaid. And I started her on July 2nd. And she is stitched on Malmo fabric by Jackson Fabric Arts on Etsy, 32 count. And I love her fabric. I have two projects on her fabric and I love it because it's just so soft. It's the softest fabric and my stitches just look so good. And when you stitch two over two, especially like on a bigger count, it's a lot harder to make your stitches look good um, than it is when you're doing one over one or one over two, especially if it's like lighter colors, white, blanc, the worst. Um, and this has a lot of Krynix in it, beautiful Krynix. Feather Fairy did as well. And she has beads. I haven't picked up her beads yet, but I felt like I wasn't going to get to beading for a while, so it's fine. I probably only stitched on her for like two or three days and I feel like I made good progress. This is where you'll see I decided to start buying regular magnets, which is what you see there. Oh, she's going to be so gorgeous. Now, typically I am a neutral fabrics kind of girl, the blue <laughs> tournament colors. I am a neutral fabrics kind of girly, but for my mermaid, I definitely wanted it to be watery and I totally was holding that upside down was I this is how it's supposed to go um and this fabric is just so soft I want to say it's like hemp fabric I don't know it's so soft there's another pattern that I want to do <laughs> that I should wait to do and it's like um oh my gosh what is her name Maleficent and it's from another does I'm doing I, st okay. I started a project yesterday um, from this one shop on Etsy that was originally on, like, ugh, I don't know names. But anyway, she has a uh, Maleficent pattern that I really want to do. And I want to, like, put it on another fabric like this. Like, remove some of the background. I don't know. Um, I just got to figure out which. And it's it needs to be a bigger piece than this because that's a big like you might not think it but that medusa pattern is medusa maleficent pattern is too big for a piece that's this big so i'm gonna have to get an even bigger piece so i'm gonna have to message uh the seller and see if she can do me a custom piece which i was looking on her etsy site yesterday and i believe she does custom cuts so anyway that's aphrodite my mermaid you'll notice that i Will you notice? I think I have two mermaid projects going and two mermaid projects kitted up. I love mermaids. <laughs> okay, my next project, I started this one on 
July 4th. I remember July, I had this project and the fabric in my possession and I wanted to start it. And at this time, this was July, I was just buying the DMCs that I needed for the projects that I was working on. So sure, Stephen King's house had like 30 plus DMCs in it. Sure, Greenhouse of Oddities has like 40 plus DMCs in it. Feather Fairy has like 20 plus DMCs in it. But I was like hoarding them in, in their each bags. And so every time I wanted to start a new project, I would have to go get all the DMCs for it. Now I don't do that. I just have my master set of DMC. So if I wanna start something, unless it calls for a fancy floss, I can start it and like Hobby Lobby's right down the road, Joanne is right down the road, Michael's is right down the road, Three Stitches is right down the road. So if I need, if I run out of a color, I can just go get it. I don't have to go every single time I want to start a new, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I was saying that because I remember the morning of 4th of July, I told my husband, I was like, I really want to do a Christmas piece for Christmas in July. And so I pulled out my lavender and lace uh, pattern and we went and I was like, let me Google and see if Hobby Lobby is open on 4th of July. And they were. Um, and so we went and bought all the floss on 4th of July and I started it. And this is my, um, what is it called? Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. And this bag is a bag by Dot Dot Goose. I want to say this is Teresa Kogut fabric. So it has like all the words on this side and then on the inside there's like Santa's um, so yeah so if the, the project calls for DMC I don't hold it in the bags but I do hold like um, the extra like fancy floss or whatever that they need anyway so this is stitched I believe on affogato as well yes 32 count affogato by fiber on a whim this is probably my project that is closest to being done he is definitely going to be done this year. I just put in his face and the project hits different once you get their face in. I do have to backstitch, but you could still tell. You could still tell it is Santa. Oh, the designer of Lavender and Lace knew what she was doing with all these like shades of red and how they just look so good together. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Santa Claus's period. Like my Christmas decorations, 90% of them are Santa Claus's. My Christmas tree itself is done in Santa Claus's. Um, so this one, of course, is my love, my lover boy. He will be finished within the next month or so. Guarantee that. And then I just need to find a framer. Um, I live in Houston, so like I'm pretty sure there's a few of them somewhere. But yeah, that is my spirit of Christmas. I love him. And then I started another Mirabilia. <laughs> and this is in, an, in another uh, project bag by Dot Dot Goose on Etsy. And I want to say this is Teresa Kogut uh, fabric as well. The back is stars. I also love to stitch patriotic things, by the way. I have a few patriotic samplers that I just kitted up that I haven't started yet, but they're kitted up and I'm excited to start them. And the inside is... Um, the stripes of the flag. I really want to learn how to quilt. I would love to do a patriotic quilt. If, if I ever just do one quilt ever in my life, it would be a patriotic quilt. I would love it. Anyway, if you didn't know, this is Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. And I start, started this on July the 6th. And this fat, this was a restart. I had started it before on like the called for fabric that is horrendous do not recommend so i restarted it and this is on 30 count we the people by primitive hair it is fraying so bad i need to put some fray check on it i'm gonna do that before i work on it again but it, it is like can you see all of this fraying it's pretty bad this fabric though is gorgina it's like the, is it the constitution <laughs> is that what we the people is she sounds dumb is she even american uh, that's where we are. I am doing the blue conversion. I kind of want to make her a brunette. We'll see. Uh, one conversion at a time, Beth. Let me get the dress done first. <laughs> but yeah, so she is Gorgina. I cannot, cannot wait to get her done. I just gotta, 
just gotta get to stitching and this is probably two days worth of stitching like I feel like if I were to dedicate like a month I could probably have this completely stitched and it would just need to be beaded you know like I can do it I can do it now when my kids start school in August I might take away some stitchy time because I'll have to like pick up and drop off and class things and doodahs and duties and I um do cookies right I bake sugar cookies and decorate them exhibit a <laughs> I just do these for Christmas um and when my kids start school I want to be that mom I want to be the mom that is like the classroom mom she does all the treats for the class and whatever so when my kids start school I might be a little bit more busier so I need to get as much stitching as I can done between now and August that is a zip plan all right up next and another project bag <laughs> This one is by Dark Carnival Designs, I believe is her Etsy shop. The one that did my Pennywise bag. This one is, she still has this in her shop. It is Little Mermaid, right? But every one of her bags has something fun. And she has flounder on the zipper. And the inside is skit. Like, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed and her zippers are like butter okay butter like her zippers are so they're bougie they're nice i love them this is a heaven and earth design this is one so i started this when did i start this adrift on july 19th this is called adrift it is a mermaid and um long story short i had started this this was my very first heaven and earth design back in 2015 i think i got like a page and a half completed on it and then y'all yo girl was stitching this on like a 14 count ada way back when it was a bed sheet okay um <laughs> but i had got rid of that and when i restarted stitching in april and i would think about it all the time i was like i'm not gonna do any full coverages like i'm not like i aesthetically like when you go into a house, I would, I aesthetically, like my house is done in like grays and beiges, very millennial mom, um, type thing. And like, I would love to have like the primitive samplers and like the, you know, but then I got sucked into, I've been watching floss tubers doing their full coverages and now I have like nine of them going. Anyway, so I couldn't stop thinking about this mermaid that I had started way back when and I didn't have any more and I loved her so much. I bought her again. I bought her again and I started her again. I didn't get much on her because this was just one day of stitching. Uh, I started this on July the 19th and I stitched on her for like one day and then the next day started my, my stitchy bug left the building and I didn't start stitching again until October. So there was like a huge gap there. Um... <laughs> But anyway, this is a drift. This is done on 25 count Lugana Easy Grid. Every single one of my full coverages is on this same fabric. So if I forget to mention it, they're all on the same fabric. She's still going to be a big girl, okay? I want to say, that's the back. <clears throat> I want to say this is the way up. This is not part of the fin. This is This is part of her tail, but not part of like the... You know the very end of the tail this is part of whatever so it might look like it's upside down but it's not because her fin is big her like end of her tail but anyway this is I'm just color completing but that's all I've got but I am doing a full coverage challenge for 2024 uh, I joined a Facebook group called full coverage fanatics and I'm doing their like 25 journey challenge. I'll show you that at the end of this video. Uh, but yeah, so there's my Adrift Heaven and Earth Designs. Who is the artist? Artwork by Selena Finnick. Yeah, 400 by 574 stitches. And if you're thinking, damn girl, this be this ain't even my biggest. <laughs> I think I have like two more that's, or three more that's bigger than this. It's fine. This is my full coverage. I am doing this for me. I think I just picked my tripod. It's fine. The angles are going to change throughout this entire video because I keep having to stop to go handle business with my chillins. Um, 
This one's for me. This is my project for myself because I'm stitching a full coverage for my husband. I'm stitching one for my son and one for my daughter and a few more. <laughs> so then on November the 19th, I decided that I wanted to stitch again. And instead of picking up another project, I started a new one. This is a kit that I bought off eBay. I'm gonna show you. I know I've been inserting pictures of the patterns just because you can see them better with no glare and whatever. But just in case I can't find this particular pattern because it's old, I'm gonna show you now. This is Little Partners by Needle Treasures. I bought this kit off eBay. My son is very, 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 very much obsessed with farms and farm animals, but specifically horses are his favorite. And we are moving in March from this house to another town. And um, my son, so my son and my daughter are 12 months apart. And when we moved into this house, my son was an infant, my daughter was one. And they shared a room. And then now they're four and five. And so we're moving in March and they'll get each get their own room. Cause we knew this wasn't like our permanent place. So they'll each get their own room and his room is gonna be done in like horses. And I really wanna get this done so that he can hang it in his room. I really hope he stays in his horse phase for a long time, but we'll see. But this is stitched on the horrendous <laughs> kit provided fabric, which is an Ada. And um, I'm doing it with the kit, everything. And I just got this middle horse started and I've been back stitching as I'm going uh, to make it easier on myself. Even though like you can barely tell cause this horse is so dark. This is the ugliest horse on the pattern. I cannot wait till I get to the cute horses. But yeah, so that's that one. This is one night. You know what I'm saying? Like if I can just dedicate, which I do have a rotation in set uh, for 2024 that I will be dedicating multiple nights for some projects to get some work done, you know? So this next project is a restart. So I initially originally started it in July. Okay, so this was started in July and I started it on a 28 count ivory even weave that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And this was a project started for my husband. My husband's been asking me to stitch him something and we were looking and looking and it took a while for me to like finally find something and I sent it to him and I was like, I think you would love this. And he was like, yes, absolutely I do. So I started it and I, it's not the count that I hated. I cannot do, I mean, maybe I could. I don't want to do a full coverage project on non-gridded fabric. And I know what you're saying, Beth, you could have just went back and gridded it yourself. Ain't nobody got time to grid. If I have the option to just buy gridded fabric, I'm gonna buy gridded fabric. I'm not gonna grid it myself. I don't have time for that. Um, so this is where, this is, what is this called first? This is called Golden Fields and the artist is Abraham Hunter. I am doing the regular size chart and I got this off of Artisy. So I started it on this 28 count fabric and I had to frog many a times. <laughs> but I hate, the only thing I hate about full coverage is the backs. They look trashy as fuck, but like you can't help it cause it's like, you know, there's like confetti in, in every single Full coverage that you're gonna do but anyway so you could tell that there's a deer there you know I just I did never wanted to pull it out because I just it's so much easier to do it on grid, gridded fabric um, now that I'm getting rid of this I was saving it to show you my restart I'm getting rid of this I'm gonna take off my needle minder use that for something else um, so anyway then I restarted it on November 24th because he kept asking me, he was like, so how far along have you got on my project? And I was like, I just I don't want to stitch on it because I hate the fabric. So one day I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy. I'm just going to start over. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to start over. So I did. Um, and I started over on the 25 count Easy Grid Lugana. And um, this time I'm color completing. So it looks a little different than my other one. <clears throat> You can kind of see the bodies of the three deer. <laughs> it's going to be 
little. I say little, it's like 60,000 stitches. It's definitely not little, but little compared to my other full coverages. But yeah, so I'm color completing. It doesn't look like it, but this is, this is like over 3,000 stitches. This is a lot of work. I keep looking at the viewfinder because I'm looking at my projects. I'm sorry. <clears throat> anyway, so there's that. Feel, I keep calling it Dream of Fields. It's not. It's called Golden Fields or Field of Dreams. I don't know what I'm calling it, but it's called Golden Fields by Abraham Hunter. He has some beautiful, beautiful artwork. There's one called um, God Shed His Grace. Oh my gosh. Stunning. Stunning. If I ever finish this one, that's what it will be replaced with. And then... I was like, well, I'm working on this for my husband. Let me start one for my son. So I did start uh, the portrait of Father Christmas earlier in the year. I haven't shown it yet because I've restarted it. And I didn't restart it until December. So you'll see in a minute. But I started that. And ideally, I would like to get that done and framed. And it'd be like a tradition to hang it above the fireplace every Christmas, whatever. Like a staple in my Christmas decor. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I could also stitch something for my son and my daughter and they get it, like I gift it to them when they graduate and move out and whatever, and it could be like their Christmas staple to hang up this big portrait. I don't know. Anyway, so I was hunting for something. So at the time, my son was three. He's four now. Um, <laughs> it's only been like a month, man. It's not been that long, but he just turned four. But He's really big into farms. He's been into farms and farm animals for like two years now. And I was hunting for something that he would enjoy, but it would also remind me of the time when he was, like when I started it, if that makes sense. So I wanted something that was like farm-ish, but Christmas. So I found on Artisy, it's called The Christmas Barn by Thomas Wood, charted by Artisy. And this is stitched again on the 25 count Lugana. All of my full coverages are one over one full cross, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. And again, I am doing color completion on this one. This is a little bit bigger than my husband's. <laughs> so I'm going to lean back. This is what I've got done so far on this. I am just color completing 310. I really need to buy like the cone. After the next order that I put in for my one, two, three stitch, I'm going to order the cone of 310. You'll see why, because of my other project. Anyway, it's a lot of black, y'all. A lot of black. Um, but I just enjoy it. It's so much more satisfying for my brain to color complete. Because after every color, it's like you... It's like completing a motif, you know? Like the that little sense of high that you get. I don't know. It just... My brain loves it, and that's why I stitch this way. I can't, I try doing like page it by pages or parking, and I just, no. Mm -mm. Hanging threads, and I, I'm going to pass on that one, fam. Look, this is all I have left of my skein of 310. Um, I've used that much 310 so far, and I'm not even halfway done with the amount of 310 stitches I have in this project. This next project is being stitched for my daughter. Um, I am doing her a full coverage piece. You'll see that in a little bit. This is not full coverage. This is just something that I want to stitch for her. Um, just cause. And it is the November Topaz Fairy by Mirabilia. Now, my daughter's name is Emerson, which starts with an E. And her birthday's in November. And so it's like the November Topaz Fairy. And coincidentally, the little vine in this pattern, to me, when I look at it, it looks like an E. It looks like the fairy is holding an E. And I was like, it's just made for my daughter. My daughter has dirty blonde hair. My daughter, her name starts with an E. Her birth is in, like this Mirabilia design was made for my daughter. So I was like, yep, I have to start it. So I started this project on December the 2nd, Britney Spears' birthday. Don't ask me why I know that. And this one is stitched on 32 count Cafe Olay by Fiber on a whim. And I bought this one off Etsy, so this piece of fabric, so it's not surged. Note to self, if you're going to buy fabric that is also sold on 123 Stitch, buy it from 123 Stitch because they surge. You guys, I did, this is one day of stitching. One, if I could just like sit down 
if my ADHD can calm down and I can just be monogamous just for like a week or two, could you imagine the progress I'd get done? You know what I mean? This is beautiful, first off. Her mama taught her well. Uh, Nora Corbett is the designer of Mirabilia. And her mama was the designer of Lavender and Lace. Um, and like Butternut Road and some other, like they both had like multiple different designing lines, but yeah. So, another Mirabilia added to the list. For May, I'm like, do I wanna do Mirabilia May or do I wanna do Stitch Mania? I don't know. Okay, this next piece is um, a piece that everybody and their mom is doing. It is by Blackbird Designs. It's in the Home for the Holidays book. And you probably already know which one it is. It is Christmas Garden, the sampler. And I chose the called for floss, um, which is like, I chose these colors because I just love how primitive and old they look. And then this pattern has initials throughout it and I'm just so excited to have something with like all of my family's initials in it. And I, the call for fabric, <clears throat> I think the last time I showed y'all this, I said I have the call for fabric. It's the called for, it's the recommended fabric from 123 Stitch. It's not the actual called for fabric on the pattern. I made a mistake there. Oh, I forgot to put my card back in that project bag. So this is being stitched. This is going to be such a chaotic video. I've had to stop so many times. <laughs> this is being stitched on 30 count parchment linen by Weeks Dye Works. First time stitching on 30 count. I don't hate it. The weave is very loose though. But that's where I'm at. She's beautiful. This was the first time using fancy floss. So it did take me a little bit to learn that when you do two strands of fancy floss, you cannot do the loop start. I did not know that. I mean, I didn't start it because I like, I was like, there's no way you do the loop start because then the variegation wouldn't be very good. It'd be like mixed. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be like right. So then I had to, anyway, she's beautiful. I love her. She is on my list to finish this year and then we're going to get her framed and she'll be like a permanent heirloom piece. I hope. My kids better not, better not donate all my stuff to Goodwill. I will cut a hoe. I will come back from life, from death, come back to life and cut a hoe. Okay, up next we have a project bag. This project bag is from Dot Dot Goofs. This project bag was made for this project. It was, it just matches it so perfectly. When I saw it on there, I was like, yes, absolutely, 100%. So the back of this, pro this is from Dot Dot Goose, did I say that? The back of this bag has black birds all over it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this looks like a Teresa Kogut design. I don't know if it is or not, but it definitely looks like it. Um, so the inside has witches and pumpkins and stuff. Like this was just made for this project. Anyway, so this is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by who's this by I don't even know who this carriage house samplings and I started this on December the 5th I don't have any um Halloween projects going you could say that my Stephen King house is a Halloween project but it will not be hung up at Halloween it'll be hung up 24 365 or 366 because it'll go by my Stephen King collection um so yeah, so I was like, I need a Halloween piece. I don't have any Halloween stuff. I'm not a big Halloween person. Uh, this, I don't really decorate for Halloween, but this look cool. <laughs> anyway, I'm a Christmas person. I feel like you have your stitchers, right? And you have some that are like Halloween people. They stitch all the Halloween stuff. Then you have some like me that like, I will stitch Christmas 24 seven. I, Christmas is my favorite. I will stitch all the Santas. And then you have some people who don't stitch any kind of holiday, nothing at all. They're, you know what I mean? It's like, anyway, Team Christmas. <laughs> so this is stitched on um, Heartland, 40 Count Heartland by Picture This Plus. 40 Count. And this is going to be massive. One over, one over two. I haven't been telling y'all um, stitches, whatever. One over two. 
And um, this is as far as I got. And it doesn't look like much, but let me tell you, this is a lot of stitches. This is a dense girl. And that's where I am. I am a middle starter in 99% of my projects because I am terrified that I'm gonna spend hours upon hours stitching something and then realize that it is off or I don't have border or you know, whatever. So yeah, middle starter forever. Even if it's probably gonna waste some inches of fabric, but better safe than sorry. I have a random bobbin. I am currently, I am currently eyeballing the Christmas at Hawthorne Hollow. So like, if you wanna start that with me, holla at your girl and we will get it started. But yeah, so I'm gonna put this up, charge my battery because my light's blinking at me and probably go eat lunch and I'll be back shortly to finish this parade. Okay, so December the 7th, yes, December the 7th, I decided to start what I call a small, I don't know if it's technically a small because, you know, it's not like ornament sized, but it's small compared to all my other projects. This is the Nutcracker from Soda Stitch off Etsy. I started this one for my daughter uh, with plans of having it done and framed before next December because next December we are starting the tradition of going to the ballet and watching the Nutcracker every Christmas season. She is now five, which I think um, is old enough to uh appreciate it I guess um and I would like to give her this to commemorate like the first time that we go and then she can like use it as her little decoration in her room at Christmas time if she wants to um and I started this on 32 count crystal bashful Lugana by picture this plus which is like an opalescent baby pink color and this is where I got to, not too far. Again, all of these December projects, I essentially got like one day of stitching in. Some of them I got two. I really need to continue on with this. I think it's gonna become, it's gonna come out so cute. And I got an extra piece of fabric because of the same thing, because I would like to do the Beauty and the Beast one so she can have that for her little, like, my my vision is she's gonna have her bed and her little bedside table in her bedroom and she can have the Beauty and the Beast one there permanently but then at Christmas time we swap it for the Nutcracker one and then put her tree up next to it you know whatever all these visions of sugar plum dancing in my head <laughs> that's my vision for it um I need to finish it though it's so cute I see everybody stitch the soda stitches and they have like the like they look okay and then once you add in the back stitching it just takes it up 10 notches and I'm really excited about that so this one is one that I definitely when I get to soon I'm gonna say that about everything so just ignore me then the next day on the 8th which I started did I say earlier I started like 20 something 20 I think or 19 20 uh, projects in December <laughs> It's fine. I was doing 12 days of stitch miss and I was gonna just do 12 new starts or 12 starts of stitch miss or something like that. But um, I just couldn't stop. So anyway, the next day I started another Mirabilia. I would love to do all the queens. Um, so like um, spring queen, summer queen, autumn queen, winter queen, um, Christmas queen, mermaid queen. Queen of Liberty, Queen of Freedom, um, all the queens. And so I was like, well, let me just go ahead and get the one that I can actually find on the website because all the other ones I think are pretty hard to find. So this is Christmas Queen. Where's my needle? Did I not leave it on my minder? This is, um, it's called Royal Holiday, but in parentheses, uh, it says Christmas Queen. And she's a beaut. And I saw another stitcher, Heidi, from Stitch and Faye, I think is her channel. She stitched hers on this fabric and it was stunning. So I ordered the same fabric. And I have to figure out which way this goes. Okay, it goes this way. Again, just one day of stitching because I was a starting machine in December. 
This fabric is stunning. I didn't tell you what it was. Hang on. I'll tell you what it is. Oh, I love her. So this fabric is picture this plus. Um, gingerbread Lugana and apparently 32 count two over two and apparently the Lugana gingerbread is a little richer than the regular gingerbread so that's why she recommended stitching it on Lugana so that's what I got and I'm gonna say that I love the way my stitches look on Lugana I might continue on the Lugana path Either the Lugana or that Jackson Fiber Arts. Um, my stitches look really good on that one too, but um, for two over two. Anyway, so that is Royal Holiday, AKA Christmas Queen by Mirabilia. All right, this is my daughter's full coverage Christmas piece that I'll give to her when she is 18 and graduates high school and whatever and moves out on her own. This was started on December the 12th and it is in a Beauty and the Beast bag. This bag is made by the same beautiful lady um, from Dark Carnival off of Etsy. And okay, the little zipper is a charm. Can you tell what it is? Ah! And just look, look at the zipper quality. The zippers are I just can't get over how buttery smooth, smooth they are and the inside of this one is like a gold fleck material. This one is still available on her Etsy store as of today. But this is a Heaven and Earth Designs Cobblestone Christmas and the artist is Thomas Kincaid. And this was my very first Max Colors. Not super sized, but max colors, but it is very big. It is 775 by 566. So I think this is my second biggest project. Um, max colors is a little different. I wasn't doing it color. This is also doesn't have like, I don't think it has 310 or if there's 310 in it, it's barely anything. So I was just doing random colors. I can't, I think this is the way it goes. I could be wrong, but you can't, I think this is up. That's where I got. When I look at the actual picture, I can tell what I'm stitching, but just looking at this, I can't tell. But like if I do it side by side to the actual picture, I can, anyway, it's the center start. So it is gonna be ginormous. It's ginormous. But imagine how big it would be if I stitched this on like a 14 count. Cause back in the back back day uh, in 2015, when I first started and I was doing these kind of projects on <laughs> Like a 14 count eight. I think I had two full coverages back then. I had a drift that are made, and then I also had an Outlander inspired full coverage. But anyway, so there's that one. And I have met she's five, so I have like 13 years to complete it. So no rush. But if I don't get it started now, um, <laughs> it won't be done. You know what I mean? It's gonna be one of those lifelong, at least 15 year long projects or whatever. All right, up next we have Busy Spring stitching this for one of my good friends. We have been friends since we were little girls. Our moms were friends, so we were raised up together. Um, our moms were friends when they were teenagers, therefore their moms, my grandmother and my friend's grandmother became friends because their daughters were friends, whatever. So our entire family is like, family like my you know what I mean you get it okay anyway so my friend her mother passed away a few months ago and both her and her mother liked sunflowers and when her mother died she made this very long post on Facebook and at the very end it was like a picture of a sunflower field and then she like said like um you know like rest easy mom I'll see you in the sunflowers or something like that and so when I saw this, I was like, yes, I'm gonna, I wanted to stitch something small for her that I can get it done before like the one year anniversary of her mother's death. So get it done soon-ish. Um, so I saw this and I was like, oh, this is perfect. So this is Busy Spring by Cottage Garden Samplings. And this is what it looks like. And it's all charted in DMC with the exception of the Q and W. The Q and the W is a uh, gentle arts which I have the thread, but I don't think I'm going to use it because I'm not doing the Q, the W, the Q in the crown. I'm going to put with a little quote that my friend put, like I'll see you in the sunflowers or whatever right here and then have all of that with it and get it framed for her. 
and hopefully get it to her before the one year anniversary of her mother's passing. And so I did it on the call for fabric, which is ancient by picture this plus. Oh, I'm doing this. This is the same fabric that my feather fairy is on. But anyway, this is where I got. I got the B done with the exception of the very center piece right there. And then I started, is this a hive or a skip or I don't know, but I started on that, but I, I started with like the lightest color so you can barely tell. But that's what I got done on that. This is one of the focuses that I will be focusing on, obviously, this year for my friend. Okay, this next piece, I'm actually restarting it. I started it on this piece of fabric and I don't like it. One, I don't like the fabric. It feels very like I ordered it off Timu kind of fat. I just, and it's a very popular fabric. It's the vintage country mocha fabric that everybody uses. I ordered it and I was like, this is like, I bought this off Timu. Like what's, what in the cheap S-H-I-T is this? I don't like the fabric. It's like super, super see-through. It, it's just like, I don't, nope, I don't like it. Anyway, so I, um, I'm scatterbrained right now. So I'm doing Farmhouse Christmas by Little House Needleworks. And I have the first, one, two, three, five. And I think there's nine total. I mentioned earlier that my son is obsessed with like farms and farming farm animals and it's kind of making its way onto all of us so anyway I've been kind of pulled towards farm things myself and I saw this actually I saw it on Pinterest uh, I saw like the completed thing of them all together and I was like yes absolutely 100% I'm gonna do those I'm gonna show you the patterns that I got really quick so you can kind of get an idea of what they're gonna look like if it'll focus there we go so there's a farm that one with a little cow. The qu that's my favorite part. That's the center. It's the quilt. Another one. Another one. And there's a couple more I still gotta buy. Um, so I have these, and I am only gonna do two flosses in the classic color works, which is the red and the green. The rest I don't think are worth the fancy floss. I'm just gonna do those in DMC. I digress. I went onto the website and I got the border off of the website because they give you a free border, right? And I did the border one over one, one over two. You can barely see the leaves, right? And so I was like, this is going to be a two over two over two project. It's going to need to be anyway. So I did start at the barn two over two. I just don't like it. It's too dark. I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. I know it's going to kind of wash out some of the white when it's brighter, but it'll make the other colors like the leaves in the border pop. And the little picture that I saw on Pinterest was done on a brighter fabric. So I went to that blog because it was like linked to the blog. I went to that blog and the, the lady on the blog said she ordered like taupe Lugana. So you know what I did? I ordered taupe Lugana. Comes in today. <laughs> and yes, it may be three times the price of this fabric, but like I'm just I don't understand how this fabric is so popular. It's so it's like see-through. It's it just frays, like you barely touch it and it just shrivels and it just is not I don't get it. So I'm restarting that. So but I just wanted to show you that I did start start it but it's getting restarted. Okay, up next is my birthday start. Now, this pattern was sent to me by one of you guys, which I am forever grateful for because this is one of my unicorn patterns. Um, so like this, and then Santa's Magic by Mirabilia is another unicorn chart for me. And then, of course, the queens. So, like, Spring Queen, Autumn Queen, Winter Queen, and Summer Queen are all of my, like, unicorn charts that I would love to. And Oh Christmas Tree by Lavender and Lace. Yeah. Anyway, so when I, I, I knew this was going to be a special start for me. So, it's my birthday start. I started it on my birthday, and I ordered 
the fabric and this is the pledge linen 28 count and let me show you i need to like fray what is it called fray check the edges this is a printed fabric though and it just has the pledge on it and this is my start your way to beautiful girl did i tell you what this was this is queen of freedom by mirabilia i don't think i even told you what it was but she's beautiful and i just stitched on her on my birthday and that oh, she's just so beautiful you guys i know i said this about a few other i might pull this one out tonight i don't know <laughs> i don't know it's just so beautiful i love her but but it is queen of freedom Ooh, i just i love patriotic things i just kitted up a few other patriotic patterns that i'm going to be starting probably soon <laughs> Okay, so my birthday was the 17th. So that was started on December the 17th. This next one was started on December the 19th. And that is Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. I don't know why I'm showing you. I've been showing you the patterns like on the screen because it's just easier to see than me holding up the pattern. So Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. I ordered the called for fabric, which is R&R. &R a did it, did it, did it, Brenda's Brew 40 count R&R &R off Etsy so it's not surged sad but first off the difference right this is the call for so this is what that is but in person it is so much darker I mean I, I love it I love this color but it definitely is much darker and much more of a like a chocolatey brown versus this is like a green brown I don't know but anyway this is my start and I didn't do a middle start on this one because I'm hoping there's going to be a couple of inches extra at the bottom that I can do some smalls on because this fabric is kind of expensive but that's all I did is the border and they're all no they're not all some of them are filled in I haven't finished filling them in but that was part of the border Cute, 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 cute. And I am doing all of the called for um, uh, gentle arts and weak style works flosses for this one. Okay, my last fancy project bag is this one, which is the Mortars map. And look at the little, ah, this is from, again, Dark Carnival on Etsy. I just, her bags are superior. I don't care what anybody says. And just the butter, her zippers are phenomenal. And the inside, yeah. So anyway, can you tell what the theme of this project is? This is Snape's Library. I started this one on December the 20th. Snape's Library from the Cross Stitch Studio. This is my biggest whip. It's 800 stitches by 800 stitches. That is over 600,000 stitches, my friends. Yep. And she's releasing Dumbledore's library, she said, in the new year. So I'm assuming sometime this month. I just checked this morning. It's not there. I told myself that I was only going to start one library. She's released three, I think, and she still has Dumbledore and somebody else's to go. Um, which... Out of the Harry Potter series, Dumbledore is my all-time favorite, but when you think of libraries, Snape's library has the, I am Slytherin, okay, so I do love Snape, but he has like the potions and all of that stuff, because potion master and stuff, you know, like, and so I was like, I have a, I had a feeling that I would love Snape's more anyway, and I just couldn't wait, so I bought it, and I started it, and this fabric is cut to size. Okay, it's a thicken and it's cut to size with like a three inch border around it. Okay, and I am color completing. My kids are so loud, I'm so sorry. I am color completing with the 310. This is what I've done so far, just two pages. This is the one page of 310 and then I'm on the second page of or no this is two pages of 310 and here's another like yeah this is three pages worth of completing the 310 
And this is the biggest, like you can't even, it is the biggest one that I have <laughs> in my collection. It's going to take me five ever. But everybody is doing like some sort of supersized library from heaven and earth designs. Meanwhile, I'm over, this is my supersized. I obviously love reading and, you know. I'm probably, hopefully, one day going to finish this before I am in a nursing home. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. I just, I, like, I love the look and the aesthetic of, like, the Brenda Gervais and the Blackbird designs and the Plum Street samplers and all of that. Like, if I'm going to decorate my house, like, that's what I would choose to decorate my house with. But my brain just loves stitching on a full coverage. I don't understand it. But it's like candy for my brain and to like color complete and to like, I don't know. It's just, it's different and I love it. And yeah, so you'll see this in my whip parade for the next 20 years. <laughs> Unless by some miracle my needles catch fire and I can get it done in five years, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And like, I went ahead and just put some skeins of... 310 and the other, the actual the most stitches is 939. I think there's like 50,000 stitches of 939 because there's a lot of shadow in this design. But dark, I'm going to leave dark carnivals at uh, Etsy link down below. You guys got to check out her bags. And they're like, she has Mickey Mouse. Like she has a lot of pop culture type things. And I love it. And she makes also matching like grime guards too. All right, up next is another full coverage piece. This is Starry Night um, by Vincent Van Gogh, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I started this one on December 21st and this is a little one. I say little, it's still like 50, 60,000 stitches um, and this is all I've done thus far. Not much. This is what I've done. I say not much, it's actually like I don't remember. I want to say over a thousand stitches, but it doesn't look like it is, but it is. But anyway, that's what I got done so far. I am doing a full coverage challenge this year. I'll talk about it in a minute. So I'm going to need all these full coverages anyway. Okay, up next we have a Quaker. This is Rose Quaker. I actually originally saw this on Megan from the Seattle, Seattle Stitchers um, YouTube channel. And... It was gorgeous and I was like I don't have a Quaker started let me start a Quaker so I did this is stitched I started this on December 22nd it is stitched on 40 count cream and sugar by fiber on a whim and t -t 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 I love cream and sugar fabric because it's like bright enough but also it still has some like tad bit of like old looking modeling that make, that doesn't make sense but it makes sense to me <laughs> I did a center start so we have an A and some motifs being started so yeah cute 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 gorgeous gorgeous darling and I think for this one I'm gonna do a little tweaking to there is one motif that says a token of love I think I'm gonna tweak that to something else, but I don't know yet. I don't know. We'll see. So then, after I started that one, I was like, okay. Again, I was still doing my 12 starts of Stitch Miss, so I needed like to, anyway. So I was like, let me go ahead and start a Quaker, another Quaker, and so I did. And this is a Quaker Christmas by Bygone Stitches. I started this one on December the 23rd. And at this time, I was doing a lot of baking for Christmas and I decorate cookies and stuff like that. So I didn't get a lot of time or as much time as I wanted to on it. It is fine. This is done on 40 count affogato linen. I had previously started, um, the vanity sampler by Liz Matthews. I had stitched quite a bit and I just didn't like it. And so I frogged it all and I was like, let me just use that fabric again on this. And so I did. And I am using, uh, what is this called? Cayenne by Week Style Works. I'm just doing it all in one color. And I don't know if you can tell, it's just like a 
very slight variegated red but I liked it because it was like a hot red you know what I mean it still kind of had like that primitive look but it's like hot red primitive cayenne pepper big red bubble gum <laughs> type red. Anyway, because the affogato linen has like that yellow tint to it, I wanted a red that was more of a warm undertone versus cool undertone. Potato, potato, who cares? This is, as far as I got, this is the first version. There is a second one and most of these Christmas Quakers that you see that were done by Bygone Stitches that people are stitching is the second one, which has, um, take a look at that, the, like you can see the variegation of the red. It's just beautiful, very subtle, but beautiful. But theirs has like um, song lyrics and titles throughout it. This one does not have that. Um, and I'm just gonna do the whole thing in the red. I'm not doing multiple colors. So, which is why I bought 10 skeins of the cayenne. And then this is one over two and I'm thinking, well, in the, the pattern said to buy 10 skeins of one color, but I want to say they recommended like a 30 count. And so then I should have probably only ordered five skeins. It's fine. I'll use it for something if I have a lot of extra, but that is a Quaker Christmas. Ha! And this one. When I pull this out, you're probably going to be like, what? Uh, this is not, I, I would say like not my style, um, but obviously I have, I have a broad variety of things, but um... <laughs> This one is Taylor Swift Eras, and I got it from Sydney Stitches Co. on Etsy. It was started on December 27th. This is on 32 count stone by Fiber on a Whim, and two days of stitching, okay? The very first day, I completed Reputation Taylor, and then the second day I stitched on it, I completed 1989 Taylor. So like, come on Beth, you can get this done. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this. And then I started some of the lettering that goes at the top where it says her name. But yeah, I am a Swifty. I've been a Swifty since I, I think I was a senior in high school and I had my pink Motorola Razor phone and Tim McGraw was my ringtone and my ring back tone. Remember those? Yeah. And I ran out of space on my memory card, so I had to go change my memory card. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can get through these rest of my whips before I run out of more memory or battery power. Who knows? Um, so that was Taylor Swift Eras from Etsy. Love it. We'll be finishing it very soon. This next one is Football Fan Gnome. Also found this one on Etsy and I don't know like I it's for my husband because my husband keeps pestering me about finishing his full coverage piece that I started for him and he's like when are you gonna finish it when are you gonna finish it when are you gonna finish it like bro it's 60,000 stitches calm down but I wanted to do something really quick for him he doesn't know that I'm doing this so I started this with, um, the other night and I stitched the nose not the very center part it's a gnome. I stitched the nose. I kind of want to frog it and restitch it in a different color. Cause like the nose is very like, I don't know. And then I started here. You can't tell it kind of blends out my fabric. And then I started to go work on the hat and it's, it's like brown grays. I don't know. I kind of want to redo the coloring myself. So this is on pause for right now until I figure out what colors I want to use. Cause I feel like it's Dallas Cowboys. My husband's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Um, but maybe I should just trust the process. I don't know. So, but that's that. I'm hoping I can figure it out and get it done soon. So he can at least have one. He, he has like Dallas Cowboys stuff on his desk at work. Um, so he's got like a diamond painting Dallas Cowboys situation that he framed and put on his desk at work or like on the wall and then some other things. And then this would be like in a little frame when I, whenever I decide to finish it. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to do something without him knowing so he can't pester me about it. But then I can be like, look, you're always pestering me for a finish. Here's your finish. But the coloring is kind of weird, so we'll see. Now, here's my Father Christmas. I actually started this one, hang on, way back in the day. In June, June 17th on 18 count Ada. 18 count Ada, right? 
This was my first full coverage because I technically started this one before the mermaid on this bed sheet. Like this is ginormous, right? So think about getting this framed, how much this big ass thing is going to cost. Um, I got over 6,000 stitches. I started in the corner, got bored because it's like 60,000 stitches of just 310. And so then I moved over here and then I wanted to do some red and then I went, I don't know what I was doing. I honestly don't know. But this is two over one and I'm just like not having a good time. And so I've been thinking about it, 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 thinking about it. And I'm like, this is ginormous. It's going to take up a whole wall. If I restarted it on 25 count, it would be a little smaller, a little easier to do because it wouldn't be take up the entire Q snap and blah, 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 blah. Long story short, I restarted it. So I restarted this on the 25 count Easy Grid Lugana on December 30th. I did a middle start. So I got to stitch something different besides black and green. Um, but I didn't get too much done. I don't know which way is up. <laughs> so I'm just going to guess it's this way. Could be the other way. Actually, I think it's this way. I don't know. But this is where I'm at. Ta-da! Ideally, I would like to get this entire thing done within five years so like by the time my daughter's 10 so I can get it framed and it can be part of their childhood memories see how like this is it's still long nowhere near as big as the other one though and I don't think it's going to take up this entire piece I'm not cutting it though because it surged so you know um but yeah so there's my father Christmas I again love Santa I, I when I immediately when I saw this I knew I was stitching it regardless of what I said back in the day about not doing any full coverages. I lied. Uh, so there's that. Portrait of Father Christmas by Dean Morrissey, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I know people apologize for zipper sounds. I love zipper sounds. What I don't like is when people drink on camera. Turns my stomach, especially when they slurp their tea. Um, but I like zipper sounds. <laughs> Three more whips. This one is my New Year's Eve start. So I wanted to start a project and work. So I know everybody's doing 12 by 12. I didn't do 12 by 12. Obviously I started like 20 projects in December. I didn't need to do a 12 by 12. So I did, worked on one project for 12 hours. Okay. Uh, I'm working on it via paper chart. I didn't know that you could buy long dog sampler patterns PDF. So I think if I would have had a PDF, I would have gotten a little bit more work done, but alas, it is what it is. Plus, like, I had to, like, stop and cook dinner and all that, this, that, and the other. But, nonetheless, this was my 12-hour stitch. Um, so, I'm doing Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. And I'm doing it on 36-count antique white Edinburgh linen. I um, just did this because it was, like, when I went and bought the pattern from 123 Stitch, this was their recommended fabric to use. And at that time, I had no idea what I was going to do floss color wise and so I was like well pretty much anything looks good on white except white and I sure the hell was not about to stitch with some beef beef 5 200 or the fuck no um <laughs> 5200 so I am doing it on white with 956 by DMC which is this really pretty bubblegum pink color it's like a bubblegum highlighter pink I don't know I love it Pink is my favorite color. So I'm gonna rechart a section of this. I'm not gonna say what it is because I might change my mind, but you'll have to see when I get there. This is also a bap, but it is what it is. She's beautiful. I love her. I have zero regrets. I know everybody's like, I want rich greens and purples and browns and I'm like, bitch, no, give me the highlighter pink. Give me that highlighter pink. I love it. I love it. Love it. I love it. She's beautiful. I'm doing it one over two. <sighs> and I love her. She, and it's like kind of, can you see me? I don't know. But at first I was kind of scared I was going to hate this fabric. I thought it was going to be like that, that really rough, rusty, dusty, crusty stuff that they... Um, tell you to use with mirabilia's. It's not that 
it's not that ruffity crinkly i mean it's not as soft as like picture this plus but it's not bad all right two more no you're a new start yo girl started two yesterday uh first one <laughs> i started was a heaven and earth designs because who am i this is a sow though this is heaven and earth designs was doing a sow 2024 sow and essentially you pay ten dollars you can't do it anymore they've closed it where you can't join you had until like new year the 30th to join you pay ten dollars to join they have 10 mini charts that you can choose from i chose one none of them were my style um but i was like i want to do the sal though because at the end of the day if you finish four pages of this chart at the end of the year you have a whole year if you finish four pages you get all of those 10 mini charts which is really cool but if you finish the whole thing you get all 10 of those charts, plus you get two extra charts of your choice. And I was like, bitch, okay. <gasps> okay, I'll do it. Um, and this just reminded me of Lisa Frank. <laughs> and when I saw this, I was like, yes, absolutely 100%. Even if I don't hang it on my wall, which I'm thinking like one of my kids is bound to like dragons, you know? So maybe, maybe I'll hang it in my daughter's room. But nonetheless, it's cute as hell. It's a little dragon by Sheena Pike. It's called Rainbow Little Dragons. And again, I'm doing this. And there's like 60,000 stitches. I'm doing this on the 25 count, blah, blah, blah. You get it. One over two. Nope, one over one. I fray checked this. And it. every time I open it, it smells like a grandma perfume. And I don't hate it. So this is where I'm at. I'm like at almost 1,000 stitches, which is really good for half a day of stitching half a day you guys half a day because I started something I started two things yesterday so this was yesterday morning but cute cute my battery's gonna die again so there's that love that the second thing that I started was the mandrake and that is by Medusa doll maker over on Etsy and I'm doing this on Arches by Jackson Fabric Arts, 32 count. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Started this last night, stayed up till the Dallas Cowboys game was over, which was a little after midnight. And this is how far I've got. And it is a big mamma jamma. Yeah. But it's gonna be so cute. Cute, cute, cute. I love her fabric. God, I love it. And that, my friends, is my whip parade. My battery is about to die. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a whole video of my 2024 plans. It'll be a lot shorter than this, but maybe I'll film it either tomorrow or the next day and it'll be up by the end of this week. But yeah, those are all of my whips. Ah! And I'm starting a new one today. <laughs> I'm restarting the Christmas farms. It's fine. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for sticking around. If you like this, if you like me, if you want to subscribe, I would love you forever. Like this comment this leave me the pink cart emoji down below and um i will catch you in my next video bye